Hey y'all, so today I'm going to be talking about NaNoWriMo 2019 and everything that I've been doing throughout Preptober to get ready for it. So a few weeks ago I shared a writing vlog that was basically a mashup of the last several months of chaotic, mind-jumbled mess trying to get stuff written, and over the past several weeks I've gotten myself into a much better, much more organized place. And also I've gotten myself finally centered in on one project that I've been working on throughout those three weeks and also will be working on throughout NaNoWriMo. So jumping straight into it, first up, what am I writing? If you've watched any of my writing vlogs over the past year, which you probably haven't, one of my biggest struggles lately has been picking a project. I have so many projects going on in my mind, all competing for my attention, and the past year has just been a struggle of me hopping between projects and not being able to just stay with one for more than like a week or two at a time. But in October, I finally settled on a project which I've been working on for three or four weeks consistently now, and that is Flirting with Fame, my 2016 NaNoWriMo project that I won NaNoWriMo with. My first draft with Flirting with Fame that I wrote in NaNoWriMo 2016 was the first draft that I'd completed in like over a decade, and it's just the story that keeps pulling me back in every time I get away from it. If you've never heard me talk about this story, I will leave a link up in the card to my 2016 NaNoWriMo playlist because I did vlog it and talk about it there, but very vaguely and very quickly, my story centers around a high school girl who wants to go to school for music, and she ends up crossing paths with a famous pop band. But oh by the way, this is her best friend's favorite band but she hates them, and also, she can't tell anyone that she knows them. There's a lot more to the premise, but honestly, I don't want to go into more detail because I can't remember what I said about it in 2016, so again, check up in the cards for that playlist. So that's my story. Let's jump into what I did during Preptober. So the biggest chunk of preparation that I've been doing throughout October is just the plot, because to be honest, up until a couple years ago, I didn't really have a very good grasp of story structure. I've consumed so many stories in my life that I kind of thought that I had a good understanding of how to tell a story well, and while I did have a pretty good basic understanding, there were a lot of details that I just simply didn't know or didn't have. I just came up with an idea and things that I wanted to happen in the story, and I put things in an order that seemed to make sense rather than in an order that would be compelling or that would keep a reader engaged. Which for me, someone who is a bit of an overwriter and someone who enjoys slow-paced kind of meandering stories, I ended up writing stories that were too long and meandering and slow-paced. Which isn't inherently a bad thing, I just think the way I was writing it, it kind of ended up being a bit of a, so what? Like things were happening and they were relevant to the story, but I don't think they were always that interesting. So after watching a ton of videos on story structure and reading Save the Cat Writes a Novel and just consuming a lot of different types of content about storytelling, I think I've got somewhat of a better grasp on that. And then I used that to rework the plot into something that I think is probably a more compelling story than what I previously had. So I don't think I'm like now some master of plot or anything, but I do think that I have like a firmer understanding and hopefully Hopefully that leads to overall a better story. So with this draft, I'm not really sure I would even call it a second draft of Flirting with Fame, but rather a first draft of version 2.0. As far as character development, I really didn't do that much during Preptober, mostly because I feel like I already have a pretty firm grasp on who my characters are, and I think that will only just get more solid as I continue to write the story. I did do some tweaking though, just little minor things like my main character is now a bit more extroverted than she was in the previous version, and also some of her relationships with characters are a bit different than they were in the previous draft. And then once I finished those things, I just kind of started writing. I don't have a full grasp on what I want Act 3 to be, but I think that I'm at a point where I have to let that go and just write regardless of the fact that I don't have a full idea of how it's going to end. I think that discovering NaNoWriMo and BookTube and AuthorTube has been really helpful to me in many ways as a writer, but I think there is one major way it's been kind of detrimental to me, and that's the fact that we kind of have these two pretty solid factions, which are 
plotters and pantsers. And with these two distinct factions, you kind of feel like you need to fit in one or the other, and I of course went the way of a plotter. I like to plot things out, I like to have a plot and follow it. But in reality, I think that I and most writers really are kind of somewhere in the middle, and I think that having this mindset that I am a plotter has kind of sometimes hindered me from writing. Because for me, I always have a slightly vague idea of what my act three is, and a lot of times it really prevents me from ever writing anything because I'm a plotter. I need to plot everything out before I start writing, and it takes me forever to figure out what I'm doing with act three, and that just prevents me from actually writing things. So with this draft, I'm embracing my true self as somewhere between a plotter and a pantser, and I'm starting writing without the firm grasp on Act 3 that I normally would have before writing. It's not like I have no idea at all. There are certain things that I know need to happen and need to happen in a certain order, but some of the details that I would normally want to have are just not there, and I think that I'm gonna just figure them out along the way. Now, my writing process, this is the thing that for me has most drastically changed this time around when trying to write. Like with story structure, I've been consuming a lot of content about writing and stuff like word choice and passive voice and filter words, like things that I didn't know existed and didn't know about a few years ago. And now that I've got all of these things up in my head, it's actually taking me longer to get the words out because I'm thinking about all of those as I'm writing. And I wouldn't say that my previous writing process was like fully stream of consciousness writing, but I think it also wouldn't be that far off. I mean, literally one time I wrote 2300 words in an hour. You can't put that much thought into every single individual word when you're writing that many in one hour. But now I write something and I finish the sentence and I'm like, ooh, that's in passive voice, let me go back and fix that. Since it is not yet NaNoWriMo, I haven't been keeping close tabs on like how many words I've gotten out in an hour or anything like that, but I think I've been averaging somewhere around a thousand words a day. Obviously, since NaNoWriMo is a bit more than that per day, I hope to increase that because let's be honest, this is a first draft it's not going to be perfect, and I'm gonna have to edit it anyway. Another thing that I've been doing that I've never done before is that I've actually been lightly editing as I've gone on. I found myself going back to whatever I wrote the previous day and just tweaking little things here and there. Like sometimes I'll write full sections of dialogue without any tags or any descriptions or anything, and then the next day I'll go back and fill that stuff in. I haven't done this every single day with every single writing session, so there are some sections that have been lightly edited and some that have just been untouched, but I do think that overall I actually like this because it makes the first draft just the tiniest bit cleaner than it would have been otherwise. It's not like I'm going back and doing some robust edit, I'm just catching mistakes, fixing awkward wordings, stuff like that that doesn't take that long, that just makes it the tiniest bit better. Then as far as things like writing triggers, which I am a big fan of, I have been burning candles again as I've been writing. However, I haven't been over the past couple days, I don't think you can hear it in my voice, but I am sick, I have an ear infection, it's lots of fun, so I can't smell anything right now, um, so it's not super helpful at the moment, but I will be back on it when I can smell things. I have several candles at this point, but I do have one that I specifically reserve for writing, which is this one. It's Dreamy Summer Nights from Yankee Candle. All of the candles that I have are in the, like, comfy, cozy family, but this one is a little bit sweeter, so it kind of stands out from all of those, like, comfy and coffee-scented ones. And I did get it in, like, the biggest size because I knew I'd be using this one a lot. Also, I have actually mostly been sitting in bed while writing, kind of like 60-40, like 60% of the time in bed and like 40% at my desk. This is something I might keep doing, I might change it, I really don't know. My bed is just honestly more comfortable than sitting at my desk and I haven't had any problems with it so far, so I think I'm just gonna let my mood dictate it unless I start falling asleep while writing or having problems with it, in that case I will be like, nope, sitting at the desk. I do have a Pinterest board for the story, but I haven't worked on it in like over a week. The past few times I've used a Pinterest board, I've kind of overfilled it with anything that reminds me of my story, and this time I'm trying to make it more curated and almost more of like a mood board to kind of let me look at it and like 
get the correct mood when starting to write, if that makes sense. I'm just really trying to use it to nail the like vibe, tone, mood of the story and hoping that my writing kind of reflects that. I've also been meaning to curate a playlist to listen to while writing, but I haven't done that yet. So I've just been listening to ASMR videos. Last night I put up a virtual fireplace on my TV and I just let that run while I was writing. If I do end up making a playlist, it's gonna have a pretty chill like coffee shop vibe, like Parachute or Day Six's Everyday Six title tracks during the fall. Like, anything that's like really chill. So those are my writing triggers. Moving on to my very last thing I want to talk about about NaNoWriMo and that is that I'm not entirely sure that I plan to shoot for the full 50,000 words. My November is going to be a little chaotic which I'll get to in a minute but I think that my overall goal is to just get as much written as possible without overwhelming myself. I think that my legitimate low goal is 30k. I think that if I write a thousand words every day in November, I will be content. I think, of course, I will always want to reach that full 50,000 goal, but I think this year, if I don't fully reach it, as long as I hit 30, I'll still be happy. I think for now, I'm not going to definitively say I'm not shooting for 50,000, I'm shooting for 30,000, because in the back of my mind, I want to keep saying to myself 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, but that is the direction that I'm leaning toward. Now, as for vlogging NaNoWriMo, I don't know if I'm going to. I would like to. If I could, I would do weekly vlogs, but I'm moving. This is why November is a little bit chaotic for me and part of the problem is that I don't have an exact timeline of when anything is happening. For now, the only thing that I know for sure is that I will be here until a little bit before Thanksgiving. We're kind of in the early stages of the move. Um, obviously, I don't have anything packed, so um, I'm kind of just playing it by ear right now, which I'm not a huge fan of because although in general I'm not a very organized, planned person, I don't like following people's non-plans, if that makes sense. Someone needs to have a plan, it's just not me. So those are my plans for NaNoWriMo 2019. This is my favorite time of year, October, November with NaNoWriMo and Preptober and all of the writing. It's just such a fun time and the community and like the writing spirit and the motivation is so awesome and I'm just really excited to jump into it. Good luck to those of you who are also participating in NaNoWriMo. I hope that you reach whatever your goal is, whether that's the full 50,000 words or whether you have a smaller goal. I hope that you get as much writing done as you can feasibly in the month of November. I hope to see you soon, possibly to talk about the books that I've been reading recently, and also possibly for a vlog, not totally sure, we'll see. I don't think at the moment I have announced my novel on the NaNoWriMo website yet, which I really need to do because it is two days before, so um, I will leave a link down in the description to my profile if you want to follow me or be a, my writing buddy or whatever it is now. Links to other social media, Goodreads, Twitter is also down in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!